I'm Ryan. And I'm Kristen. Welcome to our tiny house, Casita 2. So we each have a spirit stick, which just has different uh, flair from the road. So I've got um, <laughs> a jawbone from a sea lion, I think. I didn't hurt it, I found it like that. Uh, a chicken head, we found that at our old house. This was from a bird that our cat murdered. Got my owl, my spirit animal. This is a rhino tooth I got in South Africa. What else? Oh, a rattle. Got a rattle from a rattlesnake. And a pine cone from a, I think it's from a bristle cone pine from Utah. Just little fun things from traveling. Um, this is a clothing optional place to live, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, st we'll keep clothed yeah, for the time being. Uh, this is my spirit stick. Um, Ryan just made this for me a few years ago, so it doesn't have as much spirit as his, but I have um, another little bell from our old property, um, a beautiful crystal from my girlfriend Evie. Um, she's very spiritual, so she loves uh, the crystals, and she gave this one to me for my birthday. Um, a feather from the bird. <laughs> Um, some seashells from our adventures. This is from my girlfriend Evie, the same girl that gave me the crystal that's from her tortoise. It shed shed its um, shell, so she gave me a little piece for it, so I just stuck that on the top. Yeah. The owl is a vintage candle holder. My really good friend, my childhood friend, gave that to me about 10 years ago, and it's been traveling along with me everywhere. And it's also Ryan's spirit animal, so we thought it was very suiting for our <laughs> tiny home entry. <laughs> and the last thing is you have to have a way to open beers. So that's kind of a requirement before you can come inside. <laughs> Here we are. Welcome home, dear. Thank you. <laughs> our kitchen. Um, we wanted to have a f all full-size appliances, so we definitely designed the whole space around having a just a normal functional kitchen. Um, I mean, the fridge is a smaller one, but even still it's suitable for just the two of us. Uh, we went with a double oven. Yeah, the oven is amazing. Yep. I love to cook, so I had to have a full-size oven and a full-size sink as well mm -hmm. with all the bells and whistles yep. so this sink is really cool because it has all these built-ins so this is actually a drying rack so we have a place to dry our dishes which we don't have many of but it's still nice to have them off the actual counter countertops and then you have um, a cutting board that you can set here as well um, you can use it as a prep space or whatever it may be, or you can ha not have it at all. And it opens up the sink really well. So appliances um, were huge for me. I love this refrigerator because it's extremely quiet. Uh, you don't really, you don't hear it when you're sleeping and we sleep pretty close to it. So it's nice to have the quiet fridge and it's a nice size fridge considering it's a little smaller but it still works really well for Ryan and I. We chose to hang the pots and pans just to have them up and off the countertops. Uh, we have the one up here. It's hard for me, I'm five foot one and a half, so it's hard for me to get up high to things. So this is easy for me to reach um, and it keeps things nice and organized. Um, also, we only have this for storage over here, so keeping pots and pans in the cabinet or in the drawers wasn't really an option since we do need a space for some food and uh, baking. This is our awesome spice rack that we have here. It's a nice little pull out option that we have. So it keeps things nice and um, everything has a place there. Ryan also built this great um, little extra countertop piece here so I can have some everyday go-to items um, as well as here on the sides we have this nice little shelf to keep some other spices and stuff and also other uh, pans as well and then um, one of my favorite things is this knife holder it works so well 
that it doesn't it doesn't even move when you grab the knife so we we love having this option right here so obviously you have to have a range hood or some way to vent cooking gases especially in a tiny house uh, you can actually build up carbon dioxide really quickly so having a good ventilation option is really critical so you would have thought that i would have remembered that when designing the house i completely forgot to even build this into the design which is why there's a light that's almost obscured by the chimney. <laughs> so this piece should go all the way up, but I actually had to cut it. I had just built this custom uh, chimney with a little angle just so we didn't block the light. And uh, I think it turned out okay. Most people don't notice that it's just a screw up on my part. <laughs> But yeah, I'm happy with it. Yeah, so shelves, um, just another way to keep things up and off the counters, the countertops since we have very, very little counter space. Um, we just wanted to have everything have its own place. Uh, we have no cabinets in here. Um, a lot of tiny houses only have one loft and we have two. So we couldn't really go that high in our kitchen area. So we just wanted a few little shelves to tuck um, our dishes away on. That way I can easily access and um, yeah, like I said, it keeps everything off the counters. I love open shelving. Open shelving is great. Um, I made these mugs myself, the mugs and these little bowls. So um, they are kind of artsy, so I do like to see those. Um, yeah, and the dishes are really fun. <laughs> They're just, they're a little different. Well, the interior of the home, I really wanted the walls to be white and the floors to be um, a natural, more neutral color, I guess. Uh, the tile, I just love the simplicity of the tile. It blends well with the walls and it makes all the little details pop. So the, the tile is a nice backsplash. Of course, Ryan installed everything himself and did all the cutting, so... He did an amazing job with the, the tile as well. Um, and then the countertops, uh, we also wanted, I really wanted like a nice light countertop as well. And I'll let Ryan take over since he built those too. <laughs> yeah, um, I've always loved concrete. It's just, um, it's cold and heartless, but you can make it your own anyways. So we had to have concrete. It's also, it's so cheap to build with that um, even though I screwed up the first one, I built the first mold uh, upside down so you know you have to build it face down and then flip it over but i did that in reverse so this is the second one and uh, it turned out pretty good we're happy with it it's sturdy it looks great love it i think it's beautiful easy to clean mm -hmm. uh, we have filtered water that's separate soap dispenser and kristen chose the faucet which i also love so uh with our filtered water that we have here it's actually easy to just let that go and forget about it i do it often <laughs> yes um, in fact we have a running count you can see that kristen has flooded the kitchen four times and i've flooded the kitchen zero times <laughs> when you get five you get you get your next one free we'll see <laughs> All right, so our storage area for food and cooking um, is all in this area right here. Uh, we have a nice silverware and spatula drawer. And this is our beautiful snack drawer. Always got to have chocolate in the house and coffee. <laughs> Uh, down here we have just a few more um, bowls, mixing bowls, for all the baking that I love to do. And then here under the sink, um, recycle and trash. My Vitamix for our smoothies that we make quite often. And a few cleaning supplies, not much, just all natural, uh, plant-based stuff we use. Our spice rack, which I love. It's very um, consolidated for everything that we have here that we love to cook with that I cannot grow in the herb garden. And then this is kind of an all-purpose drawer with some random, random things in here. And then this is towels, dishcloths, um, the one Tupperware we own. Love these reusable bags for storage 
recipe box with some of my favorite recipes. It's actually an old cigar box, but it, it has some great, great baking stuff in there. And then um, teas and um, just some sauces and stuff. And then this bottom one is all baking. <laughs> Flowers and um, seeds, rices, uh, steel cut oats, everything that we use on a daily basis. So we definitely wanted to have a big uh, kind of open space just so it doesn't feel like a, like a tiny house. I mean, it's only a 20 foot trailer, so it's on the smaller end of, of builds for tiny houses. But one thing we noticed when we were uh, investigating how to build, a lot of people have an, a huge full-size couch in their living room and uh, we really just didn't want that. So we just have these Thai floor pillows instead. And since I've never liked couches when I was traveling in Thailand, uh, everywhere you go they have these. So we just absolutely had to have them. And then we have this little um, live edge piece of wood just as like a little coffee table. Uh, we're happy with that. Uh, then we also have the dining table. If you don't want to eat on the floor, we can just scoot these things out of the way. And um, I built this butcher block table that just folds up. So it's got a whiskey barrel piece. Grab that one. And um, we built these folding chairs the other day. So you can have a quick uh, fold out dining table. I or, used it as a desk. <laughs> or extra counter space for cooking. Yeah, extra counter <laughs> space too. Which this is actually plenty. We've never had to open this up for cooking yet. Yeah. But Thanksgiving has yet to come, so we will see. <laughs> and it folds away just as easily. Too easy. So we have our control for the mini split and we also built in a Bluetooth audio. The speaker is built into the ceiling. Just uh, you know one less thing floating around a Bluetooth speaker. Just figure if we could build it in why not. As many built-ins as possible. Yep. Um, I built this loft ladder so it just hooks on to get into the bedroom loft. There's also a, a full-time ladder. The reason for that is because this doubles as the ladder to the office loft on the other side. And uh, this is also from a rec reclaimed whiskey barrel, which used to smell like whiskey, but now it just smells like orange oil, I think. <laughs> so we keep that tucked away over here. Moving into the closets and bathroom area, it takes up a lot of room actually, but we wanted to have a comfortable bathroom. So we put uh, these pocket doors. Ryan also made those. These were actually really cheap to make just because it's um, extra wood from the siding and then polycarbonate plastic. That was actually the most expensive thing. It's like 80 bucks a sheet. But um, I mean, you can build them for probably a hundred or so with a just a typical sliding door hardware. So that gives us some privacy. Uh, we have, we each have our own closet space, which is roughly the same size. Um, we also keep the clothes hampers on my side just because I don't have as much stuff. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's plenty of room. Yeah. I don't think we have any complaints so far. Even um, being female and really liking clothes, <laughs> I was able to downsize my closet into... I think it's two and a half feet, not even. It's just, I think it's around two feet of closet space. But Ryan came up with this brilliant design. So we have the shelving in the middle, and then I have two hangy racks on one side, and then I have one hangy rack on this side for the longer items. And then I still have room for a nice uh, camera bag and a yoga mat. <laughs> <laughs> for my closet, it's just, I had to have everything in a little container everything has its own unique little cubby space so there's plenty of room for every piece of clothing I own which is not much motorcycle helmet uh, I keep my work bag pretty much everything 
I could use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I also have the breaker panel back here. So in the build, it would have actually been easier to put it in this closet, but <laughs> since since Kristen chose that side, um, you know, we should we put it here instead. But I like having it in there. Um, we also have uh, we did a like an exposed beam ceiling in here, so that gives us just a bit more closet space, and I think it looks great. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why it, it kind of slopes down here is because we have a lot of ductwork and wiring up in this part of the ceiling. Uh, so we have the vent fans from the, there's one in the shower and then there's another on the other side of the bathroom. Again, just to keep the ventilation, keep the moisture out. So kind of like the kitchen, you have to vent the cooking gases and the bathroom, uh, the moisture is the, the thing to be worried about. So, um, you know, mold can build up really quickly if you don't vent it. So that's something we had to have. And then um, the shower is all custom. We, uh, we did the shower pan in concrete as well. Uh, the tile took probably like a week. I thought I was going to be doing myself a favor with the penny round tile, but I ended up having to cut each little thing to make the edges, and it just took forever. But I think it turned out great. It's a beautiful shower. We built the shower head into the ceiling, so you get a rainfall shower. And uh, you can also turn on just the, the sprayer as well. Not only that, I won't go into too much detail, but two people can fit in there. And that's, I think, something you don't see very often in tiny houses. Uh, we're happy with it. Earlier we talked about the hot water heater. So we also have the service panel, which is just a, um, it's actually a copper gutter that I flattened out. So here we just have um, a way to shut off the hot and cold water. So say there's a leak or a pipe explodes or something, you don't want to have to go all the way outside to shut off the water. So this is just a quick way to shut the water off and we also have the controls to the water heater so it's great because you can set the temperature and just have it um, on demand hot water as soon as you turn it on you don't have to mess with the the mixer or anything like that and then of course the the nature's head composting toilet uh, not a whole lot of detail we can go into for that but it's been fine we're happy with it and then of course our sink area again built in concrete this one had to be a custom piece because it fits here in the um, the tongue, so it's just you know typical bathroom stuff. And um, Kristen shows the sink, and then just a little mirror. So we have a sailboat, and I was able to score this little porthole window. Just I think it just really uh, makes the space unique. So we're happy with that. <coughs> so these at first glance might look like towel holders. But this is actually a ladder. So we have two entrances into the bedroom loft. The reason for that is um, if someone's, well, I sleep on the other side of the bed. So this way Kristen can go up her side without having to crawl over me. And that was just something we thought would be a good convenience design. I mean, I honestly didn't think she would keep going with, uh, with going up this way, but- I use it every day. She does use it every day. <laughs> And the way it lets the natural light in, in the bathroom mm. area, is it's beautiful. Yeah. It's really easy to get ready in here. And uh, we did, we built a trap door too. Yeah, so, so we can cover it if you want. You could cover it, yeah. And right now the bed is situated um, this way, but we could flip flop it and turn it this way. That's why we had to have the door to cover that. And then uh, we've just got some storage area over here. This is also the bathroom trash. Another it's one just, of Ryan's clever designs. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually when we initially designed this, we planned on putting a washer dryer here and we had the bathroom sink here, but then that kind of cramped the toilet area. So I don't know if you can see in there, but I capped off, there's um, hot and cold plumbing in there as well. So if we ever wanted to, we could, we, you know, we could put a washer dryer here and put the sink over here someday. Um, just kind of like how we did with the two doors, just in case you were in a different parking or different living situation, it's good to have the flexibility. These cabinets, um, it's just some mood lighting. So if you're in the shower, you can just turn off the lights and just have these. Um, I just got these for free and I thought it'd be cool to put them in. 
So this is just a simple IKEA cabinet. And um, I built the, the wood surround. So we have shelves all around and below. Just kind of max out on the storage space. Okay, the floor um, was my choice as well. And I just wanted a nice um, light neutral color just to kind of help blend everything since it's a tiny space. Um, we just wanted it to feel nice and bright and open. Uh, the floor is actually a bamboo. It's a bamboo, um, what do you mean? Engineered hardwood. Yeah, engineered hardwood. And Ryan installed it while I was sleeping. And I woke up and had this beautiful floor. Um, yeah, we love it. It's super soft to walk on. Um, yeah, it's perfect. I love it. As do I. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, since I'm a freelance photographer, I work from home a lot. So I had to have a great working option. Um, so this is our office loft up here and how this works is um, I have my computer all set up and I carefully Ryan was so wonderful and mounted this on the wall for me so you can just pull it out situate it and then you can let your feet hang down like this so this is my um, awesome lap desk that Ryan also built me. That way I have a place for my keyboard and my uh, tablet. So I'll, it's basically like drawing on the computer here. And then this chair is a nice Japanese style uh, footless chair. So it just sits flush with the ground and this way I have my back support and my feet can just hang off the edge here. And then once the blood starts rushing to the feet a little too much, you can simply cross your legs or resituate yourself into a different, a different position. But it's a very comfortable work area and I can work up here for eight to 10 hour days. So back behind me is just a nice little cubby that Ryan had built. Um, it just contains some crafting artsy stuff. Um, I'm a big reader, so a few books, and I'm also getting into forensic photography, so I'm teaching myself a bit about that. And then just a little more photo gear here for me, um, nice little travel light kit, some reflectors, and all that beautiful stuff that comes along with it. The elephants are a gift from Ryan. Uh, he traveled to India a few years ago, and he brought these home for me, so I love them. <laughs> The ceiling was a, a lot of labor. Everything yeah. was just reclaimed wood, most of it from pallets. And then we um, sanded and stained everything. Yeah, you know, burnt the, some pieces. Yeah, some pieces are burned. Yeah. One piece is, is actually from the shipping crate that our siding shipped in, that which piece? is the long one on the, <laughs> on the edge there. Yeah, the ceiling is absolutely beautiful to me. I love it. It's like the one thing that really pops in our tiny house. I love the fact that it's up high so it's not extremely distracting. Um, I really love the nice open space that we have here and then we got this nice little um, piece of art above our heads. Um, I am, I'm an artist so it's hard not to have you know all my artwork and all my photos and paintings on the walls but living in the tiny space we wanted to keep things super super simple and uh, just keep it nice and clean. So the ceiling is the one thing that really just like puts a lot of color in, into our tiny home. Yeah, I mean, we could have easily put it in the wall, but um, we wanted to be able to reach it from the ground without having to go up if we left the lights on. Also, it's here so that way um, somebody doesn't accidentally switch it on or off when they're sitting. I mean, we, we're planning on having, you know, if you're having your legs hang off, we didn't want to accidentally you know, people will do uh, butt dials. This would be like a butt yeah. shut off. <laughs> so it's just, it was the most practical place for it. And we have a bonus outlet as well. Yeah. That way if Ryan's working here, I'm here, and we want to plug something in, it's super easy to do it right there. We pretty much limited to a mini split. Uh, I mean, duct ducted air conditioning would just take up too much space. And, uh, you know, mini splits are reasonably simple to install so um, I'm still finishing up this one actually but uh, it's it works great it's also a it's heat as well so uh, we haven't 
been here in the winter yet, but we'll have to we'll have to get back to you for then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it works great. We're happy with yeah. it. It's nice having this small little unit. Um, you can barely notice it, so yeah. And it's, it's running it's now. Nice. It's it's yeah. quiet. Very quiet. So as we have mentioned, the ladder is dual ladder for both office and sleeping. But if the ladder is um, on the office side, you do have the options to use either the secret passage or the, the wine barrel passage. So come on up. We made our sleeping loft bigger so we could have our king size bed up here. Yes, our king size bed to match our king size skylight. Our skylight is four feet by four feet. Um, it really helps with the openness of the sleeping loft. Uh, Ryan and I can both pretty much sit up here and it's extremely comfortable to sleep up here. It's, it's amazing seeing the sky at night. Too if we had stars, we could probably see them, <laughs> but uh, we have ha been having a really, really cloudy summer this year. So yeah. nights and mornings have been a little, uh, a little hazy here, but yeah, if we brought it somewhere where there were a little more stars, it would be awesome to stargaze. I don't know, honestly, what my favorite space is in the tiny house. We love it all. Um, it's it's just overall an amazing space that we created. It's very suiting for the two of us. It, it is very comfortable, but we do hang out on the floor pillows downstairs a lot. Yeah. And then also the rooftop balcony is huge for us because it gives us our outdoor space. And we also get to enjoy the pool, which is nice. But yeah, the sleeping area is very comfortable. It's very cozy. Um, I'm a little claustrophobic, but I'm very, very, very comfortable up here. So I don't have any like episodes or anything while sleeping up here. Uh, it's a Eastern King memory foam. I'm not sure which brand, but it's uh, super comfy. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the door for the secret cubby that you're in right now. <laughs> so if you did want the cubby covered, if you were gonna switch around the mattress, cause the mattress can go the other way as well, um, you can just simply cover up the secret cubby and it would be like, um, like it was never there. So I just keep it to the side cause I really love using the secret cubby to get up here. And uh, that way I don't have to crawl over Ryan if he's sleeping. Um, I'm usually up before him in the morning. So it's nice just to have that extra extra weight in and out of the sleeping loft. So starting at the front, uh, we actually built on the tongue of the trailer. The reason for that is so we can just have the additional room. Once we get inside, you'll see the purpose, but um, it seemed like a waste of space to not build on that, especially when you're trying to cram as much square footage as you can. So we're happy with that choice. We chose to do a kind of a blend of siding. So the wood is just a uh, beetle kill blue pine sourced from Colorado, I believe. And um, the metal is cord and steel. So it's meant to rust naturally without compromising the structural integrity. And I just really like rust. I think it looks great. So this is, we kind of set it up last minute just as a sunshade. Uh, once, the, once the sun gets over in the afternoon, it starts to get really hot in there. So that's really just to block the sun getting through. And uh, you might be wondering why there's a door to nowhere. Um, we actually designed this to be suitable for um, a couple of different conditions. So there might be a place that we park where we have plenty of room. In this case, we have to park here, so that's not so, but um, that's why we have the other door. So having two doors, we have the option to be able to use either one as an entrance. So. In this case, it's just a window, yep. which is fine. We keep it up off the wheels just to give the axles and everything a break. It's actually good for the tires as well. Uh, if you leave it parked too long, you know, it can wear out the tires. So um, you can sort of see the, the natural color is just becomes silver when it, when it arrives from the factory. And just over time, it just rusts naturally. So you can kind of see where, the, where it got more rain last winter and um, eventually it'll just continue to rust until it's even throughout. So um, we talked to a few different trailer manufacturers. Trailer made out of Colorado, uh, they just had a really good vibe. They were 
you know, willing to talk to us over the phone, and not everybody was willing to do that. So we also chose this trailer because um, custom built for tiny homes. So the, the cross beams are uh, 16 inches on center, so you can just use it as a subfloor. So not only that, but it came with the um, heavy duty leveling jacks on each corner. Uh, so it just seemed like a really great option and we're happy with it. All right, so those came from our old property that we lived on and that's how we kind of came up with the name for Casitas 2. Um, the little apartment that I lived in for a while in Solana Beach um, was called Casitas. So that was kind of our inspiration for our whole tiny house build. And um, we happened just to find these in the yard back there. So they came with us and now they are hanging on our tiny house. I just love plants. So uh, these are just a few that we brought down from our house in Vista. Um, we have many, many, many more, but plants are hard to move. So um, this one was given to us as a gift when we had our little tiny house, uh, open house. And yeah, so they're just random plants that we brought down to make the place look a little more homey. This is our uh, hot water heater and our mini split. Uh, we kind of wanted to mount everything. This is essentially the back of the house. So we wanted to have all of the services back here, just out of sight, out of mind, so to speak. But, um, you know, pretty simple, runs off propane and plugs in here as well. We also have a pressure gauge for the plumbing. It should be right around 50. Uh, I also have a pressure regulator because, you know, if we're anywhere that's too high, we don't want to, you know, ruin any of the plumbing inside or anything like that so that just seemed like cheap insurance yeah we've got our, all of our vents and everything in the back yeah the mini split uh it's it's really quiet we're happy with it it's it works we great yeah it does air conditioning it does what it's meant to do <laughs> well the um can't really tell it's a porthole window that was kind of an afterthought uh, you can see it better from inside this was just like a quick window frame i put up last minute we just thought it'd be cool to have a portal, you know, and I, I happened to find one on Craigslist for cheap, so we, we put it up there. Uh, we have a boat also, so it, it kind of it fits our, not our theme, but just our other interest in life. And the windows are all custom sizes. We spent a lot of money on the windows just because, you know, if you have cheap windows and you're towing down the freeway or something like that, they could break. Uh, it's a safety concern and um, with it being hot, you know, keeps the cold air in and the, the hot air out. Actually around the back is where you can see most of the windows. Same thing with the doors. Um, so we got uh, custom doors too, to swing out. So we have a, a couple good friends who built a tiny house and that was their first uh, piece of advice to us is their double door swung inside. The, so they said absolutely get a door that swings out. That was our a critical thing to have here. If we're ever parked in a place, we can easily have a little balcony or stairs here. But for now, it's just a, a big window. Yeah, ultimately we'll have a nice wrap around at some point. When we bought this trailer, the fender was not structural, meaning that you couldn't build over it without building a header. Kind of like when you build a window, you have to have a, a header over top to so the framing can support itself. So we welded in some additional supports here, here and there. Uh, just so we could build over top because we we knew that we wanted to have a door on top of the fender here uh, That way it's centered That was just something we chose on our design But rather than have an awkward step up and then in we built um, this Step up here, which is also uh, storage cubbies um, just camera gear cards against humanity Cat food <laughs> <laughs> Here's our cat food yeah. <laughs> and some cleaning stuff. <laughs> well, products. not not anything to hurt the cat food. <laughs> Just a good way to double up on the storage and have something that's functional as well. So we're using the side door as the entryway for now. Uh, we just finished these steps the other day. We just stained them differently just for fun, just for style. Mm -hmm. Uh, it matches the ceiling inside the house, which you'll see in a moment. Yeah, we got this turf recently. Just because it's concrete back here, so we just made it a little more homey. <laughs> and then on the side, we just have a private little 
area. So here you can see more of our windows. Uh, this is our biggest one, and this is meant to be a pass-through server window, so uh, it's not open now, but this opens all the way up, so that way we can have um, somebody cooking or something in the kitchen and just pass things out here. That is just the uh, kitchen, the range hood vent. Uh, the other one is from the shower. We actually have two vents in the bathroom, one directly in the shower and one in, just in the bathroom area. They both vent through there. And then the other one on the left is for the, um, the nature's head composting toilet, just to vent through there. And we just have just a bit of storage. I keep my surfboards and uh, spear fishing, snorkeling stuff out here. You know, we do use underneath as storage as well. Just keep some tools, just some basic stuff in case anything breaks. And um, we just put a little fence just for privacy. And um, we have our papeles picadas, even though they're not actually paper, but we got these in TJ. We go to Mexico a lot just for fun. So that's just a little um, reminder of traveling, which we hope to do more soon. So over here, um, we put in this clothesline. It just stretches out. And if that gets in the way of the hammock, just, just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a hammock anywhere you live. It's actually critical for it tiny house it. living. You know, we love it. We do love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have our herb garden going up here. I absolutely love to cook, so fresh herbs are a part of my everyday cooking. Um, I just planted this garden a few weeks ago. We've been here, I think, for two months yep, now, two so months. we're just getting all settled in now. But the, yeah, the herb garden has uh, lavender, basil, cilantro, oregano, and rosemary. <laughs> And this is our cat, Mao. Mao, say your name, Mao. Say your name, Mao. Hi, Mao, welcome home. She's a talker. <laughs> Did I mention I'm allergic to cats? <laughs> but it came with her, so I'm, I guess I'm stuck. This actually I wore all throughout the build. Yeah. We built in Valley Center. It's, it was it's hot, hot, hot last summer. So you gotta have a hat like this not only to look cool, but to keep the sun from burning your white skin. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at our garden since we're talking about gardening. Yeah. So we have a little bit of produce and a little bit of um, nature's medicine here. <laughs> We've got a few tomatoes, peppers. And we actually use our gray water to water the garden as well. So all gray water for us. Um, I also put eggshells in there to keep the little critters out. Otherwise, grasshoppers will come in and eat all of our produce before we do. And we don't like that. <laughs> so we had to have a rooftop space up here uh, with our turf. It gets a little hot in the sun, but it's really great for uh, sunsets. So we'll just come hang out up here and uh, you know have a beer or something like that. This is definitely one of our favorite spots and we designed it with a flat roof on purpose you know just for this reason so we can come up here and just hang out so we actually have uh, some good friends who built a tiny house probably five years ago they're probably one of the first ones in around San Diego to do it uh, it just seemed like a really great project something that you could build custom uh, to fit not only your living needs but something that's more sustainable so um, not only because of the small square footage, but we can just, uh, we can reuse gray water. You know, we have, um, you know, we use very little electricity and uh, propane. So it's just a very inexpensive, simple, sustainable way to live. Just low stress, low impact on the environment. Uh, it just seems like a really great way to live and we're happy with it. Yeah, I did everything from the design in SketchUp. Uh, we built everything. I had a friend help with the electric, but apart from that, I did everything else was just custom built by us. Um, we spent a total of $35,655.55 on the build, <laughs> <laughs> and that took 808 hours, which is, uh, 
I think 101 days total. That's using uh, eight hours a day for the calculation. Yeah. So in actuality, uh, I would leave work on Friday afternoon and then kind of build all throughout the night, all day Saturday and most of the day Sunday. So that was our life for about a year. Everything was probably twice as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, with the exception of the framing. The framing was probably the easiest part. It was really fun. <laughs> Everything did take quite a while. Favorite part about the build was uh, just having free reign to just be creative, do whatever we wanted to do. And um, it was kind of a, like a big engineering challenge too because we had to, uh, you have to cram everything into the, the space. You know, you're limited to the uh, eight foot width of the trailer and then you can go as high as 13.6. Uh, we maxed it on the height. So just, you know, trying to find a way to keep everything in that small space and make it look good was just a, a kind of a, it was a fun challenge, but it was hard work, definitely. Yeah. Cool. And also, we got to know each other really well throughout the build. Um, yeah. Ryan and I had, we got married a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And pretty much a month after we got married, we started building the tiny house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, a gr it was a great relationship builder. We learned a lot about each other in that amount of time. Mm -hmm. But, and, but we also learned that we work well together. We work yeah. really well together. We have similar tastes and we have similar goals, uh, which I think made the whole process a lot mm. easier. And one thing we really focused on was uh, we had a plan. We'd have a plan that we would try to focus on for the day or for the weekend. And then, uh, you know, it was getting late and I would start to get exhausted and frustrated and say, I just really want to finish this. And that's where Kristen would step in and be like, let's just take it easy and have, we'll sleep and then we'll pick it back up tomorrow. So. I, it really just kind of centered me because I otherwise I would just keep going and and he did that a lot <laughs> There were many times where I would be getting out of bed in the morning I'm early to rise so I'd be getting out of bed at like six or so and he would be just getting into bed So yeah. um, he pulled a lot of all-nighters. Yes, he did and I don't know how he does it and he's still going today But he is <laughs> yeah. well, So it's done now now we can resume normal yes. activity. Yeah, we are both very, very hard workers. We are both very established within our careers. However, we do not want to work to live. We want to live life and enjoy life and enjoy each other. And I feel like a lot of people can't do that because they're in a huge house and they never yeah. see each other or they're constantly working or whatever their situation may be. We just want to be together and live peacefully and enjoy everything that San Diego has to offer and mm -hmm. you know beyond that yeah. the world and we we do own a standard home which we just have rented out to a tenant right now but um, even that just just managing the rental is so much work yeah uh, it would just be that much more if we lived in it full-time it's just it's a lot of stress and a lot of extra hard work that we're not interested in yeah. um, and uh, you know this is a really inexpensive way to live so we, we definitely recognize that we're really privileged to be able to live this way. Um, even though we could afford to do other things, this is just a, a lifestyle choice. And I think that, um, you know, as rents and prices continue to rise, not only in here in Southern California, but it's pretty much a worldwide problem now. Um, you know, more and more people that do this sort of thing, I think is a good choice. Now we have all this extra uh, free time, we can hopefully start traveling more. That's my main thing. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to traveling yes, a lot more. <laughs> we both love to travel and adventure, mm -hmm. spend time on the boat. Mm -hmm.